Um, and uh, welcome to the last session of the first uh, session day of DrupalCon. Today we're going to talk about uh, Panoply, which is a base distribution that's designed to allow people to have easy and quick access to build Drupal sites. So as I was mentioning a little earlier, about 30% of this talk is around how base distributions work, how install profiles work, how you build Drupal products. 70% of the talk is on Panoply, which is a, a particular base distribution and one that has a lot of these functionality and pieces that I'll talk about. So um, to sort of jump in there in terms of uh, uh, details, so my name is Matt Cheney. I live in San Francisco, California. I'm not a particularly technical person by trade. I was, uh, went to school to be a librarian. So I'm very focused on content and layout and how people specifically end users and information specialists get stuff uh, published to the internet. Uh, professionally, I founded a company, Chapter 3, which is a web design and development company in San Francisco, and now work at a company called Pantheon Systems, which I also founded to help make people have better development and sort of hosting environments. It's a, a magical platform for, for Drupal stuff. Um, everything I show you here, you can actually check out and try on Pantheon uh, for free as a developer, which is very cool. There's some slides at the end to talk about that. Um, in terms of Drupal, I'm really a big fan of the Panels module, which I assume a lot of the folks in the room have used and hopefully love. Um, it's a powerful sort of engine for tools to make websites, and um, a lot of what Panoply does sort of extends that. And specifically, I care a lot about Drupal distributions, that part of the sort of thinking in terms of Pantheon is that we'll live in a world where Drupal will run 20% of the internet. And I feel that the way we get there as a community and as a software project is to take Drupal, which by itself doesn't do a whole lot, and make it work in particular verticals. So you can spin off a website in a box for whatever particular use case you have. And a lot of the work around base distribution sort of tries to get us there by making it easy and simple for you as developers or as site owners to have the ability to spin up something in a box that works for your use case. So let's start here with sort of the, the, the main premise. So like I mentioned, Drupal sort of by default, this is the starting screen when you install Drupal 7, is uh, it can be anything. It's a great deal of Legos that have a lot of positive and powerful functionality to them that we all know the kinds of things you can build with Drupal, but that you sort of start here as an end user. So when you're new to Drupal or if you're evaluating Drupal, it doesn't look like a whole lot out of the box. And that in most cases, you're going to need to install, to run some additional code beyond Drupal, whether if that's modules that you're downloading or code you're writing to actually get it to be what we want it to be. And uh, contrast that with WordPress that runs, you know, 10, 10 times the kind of number of sites that Drupal runs. WordPress does something very particularly out of the box. It, it's a blog. Like, your, your starting screen has your first blog post. Your sidebar has your comments and, and blog categories. Your entire experience is set up and designed for that kind of thing. And I think when we sort of look at how do we as a Drupal community create a world where double digit percentage of the internet runs Drupal, we need to provide more solutions like WordPress where you have an out-of-the-box experience that's really powerful. Um, it just is sort of tricky to do for a lot of reasons. But we have some successes. Uh, distributions are in the Drupal space. We have distributions for, for e-commerce stores, distributions for internets, distributions for NGO sites, distributions for government or university or you name it. And there's varying quality and sort of supportability of these kinds of things. But Drupal can be made to do the kinds of vertical use cases that we're all looking for as a as a community to get there. And a lot of these distributions are, are getting a lot of pickup in their specific spaces. There's a lot of people that are around today that use, for example, Drupal as part of their e-commerce store, but might not actually know they're running Drupal. They, they just know they're running Commerce Kickstarter or, or something like that. And the same is true for a lot of different spaces. And I think this is where I'd love to see Drupal go. The problem is that these distributions are hard to maintain. They're hard to build, and they require uh, actually a fair amount of sort of technical know-how to, to get these things working. I've, I've built several distributions in my life, and you know, just even getting started with writing an install profile is hard. Picking the modules that you want to use and how they work together is hard. Ha taking Drupal and creating a better admin experience, having a WYSIWYG, or providing people the ability to sort of expand what you've done later, all are very hard problems to solve. And it's no surprise that from that last slide, that a lot of these distributions are things that are being done with companies that have venture funded money or are very large professional services firms or are, are having external funding to really make these work. Because to build something like this for your 
Drupal sort of product is actually a lot of work and constitutes hundreds, if not thousands, of developer hours um, to solve these kinds of problems. And that creates uh, you know, a, a huge barrier, which is why I think we don't see as many of these Drupal products and distributions as we might, we might otherwise want to see. Um, Dries has a pretty, pretty interesting blog post after the release of Drupal 5, that was, this is now five, six years ago, where he sort of looked at the install profile feature in Drupal, which allows you to sort of cr make Drupal do something out of the box beyond the standard functionality. And, and in his post, he talks about how great this functionality is, and, and it is great. Uh, but then he predicts that in 2006, I believe, 2007, that we'll see a tsunami of Drupal distributions as part of sort of what he thought would happen. And we saw some, obviously, but we didn't see a tsunami by any means. And I think a lot of that is because these are hard problems to actually build distributions. Um, in terms of just the audience, quick show of hands, who's like made a Drupal distribution or aspires to or whatever? That's great. Okay, that's actually, actually, that's quite a few more people than I expected. So you've probably struggled with some of these problems and are, are definitely doing, doing what this guy's doing, which is reinventing the wheel. Um, I've, you know, looking at the code of a lot of the Drupal distributions that are out there and working with a lot of people, you sort of see these same problems being solved. Like most distributions will ship with a WYSIWYG, for example, which in Drupal 7 isn't, isn't by default. So you have to install some modules and do configuration to get there. Most distributions will provide better administrative experiences, will provide a lot of these kind of extra things. And I think one of the things that I really feel is important, and this is really where Panopoly is coming from, and this is where this whole concept of a base distribution is coming from, is that I think we want to create a situation where people who are building Drupal products, either for you know, fun or profit, have a starting point that's better than that like blue screen that is Drupal by default. They have something that exists as a uh, you know, you know, higher level starting point. And this is a Drupal problem that we've seen, we've seen before that um, in the world of theming for people who make themes, like it's very, there's a lot of options in the theming world for base themes or starter themes that actually take a lot of the problems or tasks that themers are usually doing on every site they theme and providing those as sort of a common, common set of repositories. And what I sort of want to argue for or, or suggest is that similar to how base themes work in the sort of theming space, that we can have this concept of base distributions with inside Drupal. And these base distributions are things that are going to sort of first and foremost is simply bundle common functionality together, be it a WYSIWYG or enhancements on a WYSIWYG, be it a set of layouts, be it an improved search system or whatever. And these are going to be things that anybody can draw on who wants to build a distribution to have in their stuff. So the Panoply stuff, which I'll show you in, in just a bit, all of those things are things that if you want to use that, that kind of sort of magical Drupal thing in your site, you can sort of easily extend on what Panoply has to, to, do, to do that for your distribution. And sort of from, from ground zero, you get all these things. Second is that you want to provide sane and smart defaults for people who are doing Drupal site building, either as distributions or as standalone things. Um, this is relatively straightforward, but mostly just to say, hey, we want to give you a higher starting point than Drupal's blue screen that asks you to do some sort of weird stuff. And we want to have the ability, though, to have that be overridden, that it doesn't always have to be the way it is. It's just the default. And then the third and probably most important thing here is that part of, I think, a good base theme, for example, is, is strong documentation around how to extend each of the different pieces of it. And I, with Panoply or with other distribution, base distributions, I feel an important thing is explaining to people how do you go beyond what you have and how do you extend it. And that documentation is critical because having struggled through a lot of distribution writing, as I assume a lot of you, you, uh, you folks have, there's things that you just don't really pick up. like. The modules are loaded all in alphabetical order with no dependency checking. Like that's not something that's intuitive. It's not something how Drupal handles itself elsewhere, but in terms of building install profiles it is. So that's sort of what we're looking to do. And, and this is sort of then in the Panoply space what this looks like, right? We've got Drupal 7 at the bottom. That exists as just the core, core functionality. In the Drupal 8 world, it'll, it'll look the same, of course, but just with Drupal 8. In the module space, we have a set of contributed modules that are brought in by the base distribution, by Panoply. These are things that you know, Panoply needs to do what it needs to do and what I think a lot of modules people would use in their sites. And then on top of it actually sits the base distribution Panoply that allows you to have a lot of the functionality I'll show you. The important thing though here is that we have additional layers that can be built on top of this thing. So if you look at uh, distributions that are being worked on in the Drupal space, like Open Academy for universities or Open Atrium for, for NGOs, and internets, these are things that are basically taking this stack 
and putting their own functionality on top of it as a way to sort of extend where they're going. And this is where I feel the base distribution can really win by saying, let's find the right modules, find the right co core stuff, and then build a set of stuff everybody needs. And then let folks who are building distributions sit at the top of the stack and make stuff that really, really works for them. So why Panoply? What are the specific features that would make you want to use a base distribution? Or features that if you're just building a site, you'd want to have. I mean, the kind of stuff that a base distribution gives you isn't necessarily only for people who want to build other distributions. It's completely acceptable and, and valuable to use it as a starting point for building your own site, even if there, there's just one of them. So in terms of sort of the what value you get, the number one value is really a question of module selection. It's about saying, when I start from scratch in Drupal, the first thing that, that I, before I started using base distributions would do is I would just go get a bunch of modules I know I need. One of the things Panoply does is it says, I'm already going to go get you a bunch of best practice default modules. Like you're going to want to have views on your site to do any of the complicated things you want to do. So let's just go ahead and get the right version of views installed, configured, permissioned, and ready to go. And let's do that for a bunch of other modules sort of down the, down the path. So we have, in terms of selections, a pretty good foundation of modules that most of you are going to use on most of your sites, things like Views or PathAuto or WYSIWYG or Entity or jQuery Update or things that make Drupal better but require some you know, technical awareness of how they work together and some testing to make sure that that stack works. Like Something like jQuery Update is super useful to provide some higher level UX functionality but can break other stuff if you don't have the appropriate patches and, and sort of testing. And what Panoply less sort of says is, hey, we're going to give you a stack with all of these modules connected together, permissioned together, and ready to go so that you can start building on top of that. You don't have to get all this stuff installed or configured. Um, and this is sort of, you know, these are all optional in some in, or most of these are optional in the sense you can sort of remove or, or not remove them if you want, but it's that sort of same default philosophy at work. And that, so these are sort of the base modules that we have. Um, we also have some very specific modules for actually how you build distributions. Um, features is the sort of core of, of that kind of technology, but things like UUID or default config or default content or stuff like that are things that are necessary if you want to build Drupal um, distributions and are things that Panoply sort of already establishes for you, provides you clear patterns for how to use for your stuff and really gets you that leg forward. These are all sort of bundled by default. Um, the sort of heart of, of Panoply is obviously the panels modules. Uh, if you've used panels before, it's like Panoply has those things, but it, it sort of really goes well beyond that, which you'll see. But the important thing is that panels, the panels module is just one of, of actually many different modules across different projects that really gets you that kind of awesome functionality you would want to have in terms of drag and drop and, and configurability and extendability. So beyond just panels, Panelizer is a newer module. It's very useful. It takes all the panel stuff, applies it to nodes. Fieldable panel panes uses the entity system in Drupal to provide you very smart sort of pane objects that work like blocks you can drop anywhere with a clear field UI on it. PM existing pages lets you panelize everything. Panels breadcrumbs make sure the breadcrumb and, and site pathing all works well. And the panels IP is the sort of drag and drop front end thing that's sort of the, the crown jewel of, of what Panoply does. But that this is all set up for you by default when you get um, Panoply and it's something you can use if you want or disable if you want, you have a lot of options. But it, it's not easy tech to get working and get working right together and that's one of the benefits. The last bit is just uh, UX improvements. So Drupal 7 has a lot of, 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 of UX improvements that have gone on in contrib modules, things that in some cases are in Drupal 8 but are stuff that we can make better in Drupal 7 just by turning on the right modules and making sure they're tested and integrated. And so there are various things from module filter, which is a great way to improve the display of the modules page, to an admin bar at the top, to having pop-ups to pick dates instead of having to type in strings, or having the ability to save as draft different things. These are options that if you have them on your site, people are going to really notice the difference and will find a more usable experience but are stuff that in terms of building normal sites, you might not actually go in and, and download just because it requires some thinking. And one of the, the Panoply is giving you this ability to make your site better by providing you this all out of the box in a sort of sustained and, and supported way. And that sort of then, by just turning on Panoply as a base distribution, you get all of these modules already configured and um, you're off to the races. Uh, advantage two is layouts. 
So uh, layouts are a common need on sites. People want to have their sites laid out in different ways. Sometimes at sidebar left, sometimes at sidebar right. But there's a whole lot of other cases that sort of need to be addressed. And as themers or developers, you end up writing you know, different kinds of layout and CSS routines to make this stuff work the way you, you want it to work. And that can get a little tedious. It can definitely take time and energy out of your product project. And it can require you know, some complexity if you want to change the layouts. So what Panoply does to help address this is provide uh, layouts for you out of the box. So there's 31 layouts that Panoply ships with. These are the layouts. Uh, you can change them on any page, which we'll show you. But the important thing is they're all cross-browser tested. They're all responsive for mobile support. And they're all sort of pre-baked in it. So that anything you build on top of Panoply, in terms of your own distribution, your own site, you can just drop in uh, one of these layouts, and it'll just work. And that's very helpful, because this, requ this doesn't require you to rebuild these things each time. You have a library of things that are tested and supported by a larger group of people. And you can sort of depend on these, at least as a minimum, being there. It's easy to make more if you want. But that this is the kind of thing that ends up being super helpful for site builders and designers, because they don't have to go ahead and, uh, and make all this stuff and figure out how to make it responsive and things. And that's a, obviously a key feature in terms of what we're going. Search is another feature, super important. Um, Drupal search isn't particularly strong in this area. Part of it's because Drupal search uh, is sort of a lowest common denominator kind of functionality. So it doesn't do a whole lot of crazy database stuff. It obviously can't assume a backend like Solar um, or Sphinx to actually do your database exchanges. But Panoply, by virtue of using the Search API module, which is a great module and really extends the Drupal search experience, can give you an experience out of the box that uh, looks more like this, where you have a, a, your search results are a view, which is easy to theme and customize. You've got facets for like content type or date, and you have that whole page being a panelized experience. So that allows you to go beyond just having the normal Drupal search, but having a pretty strong, robust option out of the box. And you just get that by virtue of turning the thing on, which is very cool. Content editing and WYSIWYG, uh, as I mentioned a little earlier, this is like a critical part of most like modern web content management systems and a necessary piece for a lot of people to put their thoughts and opinions and, and stuff online. Um, Drupal 8 will likely have one of these things that'll go, well, that'll work, you know, hopefully pretty well. Drupal 7 doesn't. One of the things Panoply does is provide you that experience. And it's not just like turning on a WYSIWYG and having it work. It's about making a really sort of, you know, best of breed experience. So we have TinyMC, which we had used for a while, and now also CK Editor, which is uh, probably what will be in Drupal Core. And that those editors are obviously visually going to provide that WYSIWYG experience. But behind the scenes, we're integrating the WYSIWYG module to make all that sort of work, along with the caption filter module to do stuff like that caption on the right, media module to bring in media assets, image resize filter to allow for Im automatic image resizing um, and scaling on the fly, WYSIWYG filter to make sure that we can have all that complicated markup go through the security filters, but nothing we don't want, which is actually a pretty tricky task, and pathologic to manage some of the links and, and other URLs that are put in there. And all of this stuff, there's like a lot of thinking and man hours and people hours that went into making sure that this WYSI WYSIWYG really, really, really works for people. And that's something that you just sort of get by default. So if you've ever gone in and have to configure WYSIWYG, you don't need to do that anymore. You just use a base distribution and you have it. And anyone who uses your site has it, uh, which, is, which is very, very useful. And I'll, I'll show you this in the demo, but as a sort of key feature for what a base distribution can do, providing that experience is critical. Last couple of things, so user administration, or um, uh, site administration is really important. Drupal, by virtue of being sort of a, bo a box of Legos with a lot of developer sort of interactions, doesn't necessarily have a, a particularly strong content editing experience. That's something that will be improved hopefully in Drupal 8, but that one of the things Panoply does is sort of give you that kind of WordPress style experience now. So it'll turn your, your sort of node add or node edit page into something that looks a lot more like this, where you've got obviously the WYSIWYG, but like uh, your left side focused mostly on the, the content, the right side a set of options around that. And it can give you that kind of experience without having to do any extra customization. And this is something that will make your users much more appreciative of sort of the interaction with the website, much less confused about what's going on, and give them a sort of consistent experience across any kind of s content editing they're doing on the site, which in our experience has been really helpful.
This is also true for the uh, sort of other pieces of content you want to add to your sites that aren't nodes. So a pretty common request that I've seen in the Drupal space is for someone who wants to say, add an image to a sidebar, um, how sort of one would go off and do that. Um, that's not actually that easy to do in Drupal, surprisingly, um, mostly because you know, having control of what stuff shows up in the sidebar is a different interface from where you upload files is a different interface to how you, do, you know, define um, some of the things that go there. And so one of the sort of key pieces that Panoply can do by virtue of leveraging fieldable panel panes and panels is provide you this sort of cool experience where like any place on the site, if you want to add something, you can just click and say, add me something. It gives you these options of sort of what you want to add, and you can pick. Do you want to add link, quick links, or files, or a map, or video, or uh, a submenu, or something like that? And those all sort of get popped up with their own configuration boxes that allow you to sort of say, oh, I want to add an image, and I want this alt text, and it needs a caption, and you know, I want to make it a link, or however you want to do it. And that becomes really helpful because you can turn that over to another content editor and user and say, I want to be able to have uh, control of my site after you've built it for me or after I've installed it. I can use this kind of stuff to really get in the guts of it. And then the last and most important piece here is that um, Drupal websites are, by virtue of how they get built, very complex. So like you look at a, any a sufficiently complex Drupal site, and I assure you, some of the content's being built by blocks, some by views, some by nodes, some done in the theme, some through custom modules. Like you're never going to have a clean understanding as an end user of where it comes from what. And even if you turn on something like the contextual links or the contextual module where you can have little contextual links on each piece of content, if you hit edit that thing, it can go to a block screen, it can go to a view, it can go to a node edit page, and this becomes really hard to change what you have later. So, I mean, there's plenty of people in this room who obviously build Drupal sites, no problem to change them. You want to hand it over to someone who's not a Drupal developer, you run into problems really fast. And if you're trying to make a distribution for other people, this is like an essential problem to solve. Because I need to say, I want to give you a whatever website in a box, I want you to turn it on, and I want you to be able to make a new page on it and have it like be the kind of rich content management, content editing experience that people want from a, a CMS. And so what we're doing in Panoply, uh, which is sort of extremely important, is that every single page on a Panoply site, uh, you know, you can turn it off if you want, but by default, you're getting this black bar at the bottom that gives you these options to customize the page or change the layout. And just by customizing it, you get into this kind of editing experience that's really helpful. And this is really what I'm trying to sell, I think, first and foremost to you all, is that this kind of model of saying, I want to edit a site, click customize, and uh, have that ability to customize. This is what people want in their distributions. This is what people want in a lot of cases as end users of their site. And this is what you can get um, by just using a base distro like, like Panoply. So uh, let's uh, dive in and, and see how that works. All right. So I'm going to put it back to mirroring. And um, let's get going. So I've turned on, I've installed Panoply just uh, as a sort of base thing. I haven't changed any of it from what you would normally see. So if you guys went on and like downloaded the tarball or went on Pantheon and got this up and running, this is what you would get. The only thing I've done sort of, I guess, special is I turned on the Panoply demo module, which just provides some content so you can see images and, and pieces and stuff like that. So the stuff that I think is sort of the, the super coolest here is this, is this black bar like I mentioned. So I can sort of show you some of these interaction patterns. So changing layout is super nice. So I want to change layout of, of the front page. You can see I've got this kind of layout up here. It's, it's grayed out to indicate that's what I have. But if I wanted to, to flip the page, I can just click on the other uh, layout. It'll go from this to that and hit save. And then right there in my browser, it'll actually go ahead and resize and realign the layout of that page. This is nice because I've been able to change where the content lays out, what CSS using to do the layout, all without having to go into the code or do anything complicated. Um, for themers, who, people who change layouts and stuff, that can actually get a little complicated if you're not um, using a tool like this. But you know, there's some white space here, I might not want that. And I can sort of play around until I get sort of the kind of, of layout experience that I really want. So let's try, try that one. And uh, 
now we have something that approaches a little, a little more reasonable. And this is true on the home page, obviously. This, and then that's powered by panels and page manager. This is also true in any node or any user or any taxonomy term. You get that same ability to change the layout. And that's super cool, I think. The other piece you get is the ability to actually customize what's on the page. So when I hit customize, I get this uh, interface that, that got designed up. Um, and it's got the each individual sort of area on the site with a, a special like bit at the uh, top. So I can go ahead and hit this uh, plus button. And this gives me this add interface that I, I had mentioned before. So the add interface is cool because you actually have the ability to select between the various widgets on here what you want to add. You also have the ability to predefine things that you might want to add to the site. And these, are, these can be views, these can be custom content panes or whatever. And this is where I think in a sort of distribution context you can get a lot of mileage. So in this demo, Panoply demo module, we've actually gone ahead and say let's define three different sort of widgets or blocks or panes that you might want to have on your site. And you could think of this if you wanted to make a university distribution, you might have courses or events. Or if you wanted to make a news site, you might have recent news or you know, featured news or whatever. But each of these things, it gives you a version of what this thing looks like. And you can go ahead and say, OK, I want to show, say, a list of these items. And then it'll actually give you this editing interface to actually change the different properties on this. So this is all done through panels and the panels IPE to get this interface. But that these kinds of pieces here are actually options that are coming out of views. So um, Earl Miles, who wrote panels, also wrote views. Like a lot of the logic is really similar, and there are really good interactions and, and integrations between the two. So we can go ahead and change stuff that's like pretty you know easy to do in views on the front end. So we could actually just go ahead and get rid of the image if we wanted, or we could get rid of the the teaser text, or we could could add an image, but we could you know. Or maybe not add an image, but organize it in the table, sort it with whatever properties. And we can really sort of you know, have that kind of customization experience as sort of an end user without having to go onto the back end to do any of these kinds of things. And let's say we'll, we can go ahead and change this. Let's just have two. And um, this is the kind of power that I think a lot of people, when they come to Drupal, are sort of expecting Drupal to do. And when they hit edit and have to go to the sort of airplane dashboard that is the views UI, people get a little bit freaked out and they get confused. Having something that's a lot more sort of there and, and sort of visual is really helpful because I can sort of see in this preview what I'm getting before I get it. So we'll go ahead and add that, which is cool. Um, once we've added it, we can obviously go customize it again and we'll get those same options. But we also get the ability to actually stylize it. So one of the things that panels sort of ships with is the ability to create these things that are called style plugins. And they're sort of just basic theme functions that provide sort of common design patterns for each individual thing. So you can do things as basic as add the CSS class to what you're talking about to things as complicated as adding JavaScript or other things. Um, so the neat piece here is I've taken the, in the Panoply demo module, we define a few of these things. These are just Drupal, Drupal.org style palette colors. But you can actually go ahead and create backgrounds and uh, you know different kinds of of, uh, of, of, of visual representations. And by just simply doing this, we can right there in the UI actually change the, the color and display of what this thing's looked like. And this is, I think, a huge, a, huge, a huge benefit to people building distributions or creating their own themes. Because instead of just saying, hey, if you guys want to change how this looks, go change CSS, you can actually predefine a bunch of options that like meets the particular style palette or style guide of the site and have a really first class experience with changing how all that stuff works. And that's something that I think can be really valuable to end users because if you give them a CSS inter, uh, visual editor, they might get a little freaked out because they don't know what that is or they're not super pro with that. You give them this kind of thing, you get a lot of mileage out of it. Um, so we'll go ahead and save this, save this page. Uh, you also get the abilities because you can sort of have, have a sort of visual look of what things are that you can sort of see before you save. You can hit cancel if you want. So for example, we can you know, go ahead and uh, drag stuff around, maybe have it in different positions, or in some cases, remove it altogether and have a sort of better site while doing it. And that's, I think, to, to me, like that's the this is the kind of feature that people really like and really want to have in their, um, in their content management system. And you sort of get this in the, in the case of, 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 of Panoply. So as I said, it's true for this page. 
This is a, um, an actual node page. There's a, uh, a sort of default template for this kind of node type that like shows like this, and all, all content you make will look like this. But if you want to go customize it, you can customize it on a per item basis. You can make this node look different, which is sort of cool. So let's see. Uh, so that's, that's sort of piece one. You can edit existing stuff. The other cool thing that you can do with Panoply is that you actually can go ahead and add new stuff with a sort of cooler interface. So I'll go ahead and hit add content. When we add content, we get sort of two options out of the box. These are options that are going to be pretty, pretty uh, familiar to folks in the Drupal 8 world, where you have the ability to create a content page, which is an, a node in Drupal speak, but it's a piece of content. Or you can do a landing page, which is something that's going to be a lot more sort of, st sort of static and, and it's not necessarily a kind of, of uh, kind of like, you know, you don't need a thousand of these things on a site. So to show you a content page, this is the sort of editing interface I mentioned before. So let's go to this really great content. And this is modeled very, very closely off the WordPress editing, editing screen. We have the title as a sort of privileged item that's bigger. We have the URL for the title that's uh, coming out of Path Auto, but is visible to the end users so they can sort of see what, what URL they're editing. We have the actual you know, WYSIWYG area where you can actually type sort of all the text you want, as well as, as work with the media integration or the caption integration or whatever. And this is all stuff that sort of gets set up and, and uh, hooked in just by virtue of sort of turning off Doppler. So you can upload new files, you can pull them off the web, or you can, you can pull them from your library of files, and you sort of get them all, all there, which is cool. You also get the ability to sort of, you know, depending on, on what kind of settings you want, you can have an advanced menu or a, a more basic menu. But you get all these cool WYSIWYG features, and it all works sort of relatively securely. You got that date pop-up, which I mentioned, so you can have the ability to sort of set p publishing deadlines for stuff just by virtue of having this little jo JavaScript pop-up. You have all your sort of, you know, business logic or config options on the, the right side of the page, so you can actually, you know, you know decide, hey, I want to put this in the menu and, and pick where um, without having to, having to, like, you know, scroll down to the bottom, find the collapsible field set, get the right thing. And then we have this save as draft functionality at the bottom that instead of making published like a checkbox on another, a longer list of options, it becomes a very first class kind of operation. So if I want to put this thing live, I can just hit publish. If I want to save it as a draft state, I hit save as draft. Uh, we'll go ahead and publish it just because it's a demo. But this is something that when you sort of do some user testing with different users, they very much like the sort of click button as being the kind of action that would show what they want. So this is, you know, just a normal page, uh, similar to other, other ones, and we can go ahead and customize that if we wanted, but that's um, sort of the experience people will get when they, when they edit, you know, whatever kind of content they say. The second thing is these landing pages that are very cool. So a landing page is something that we can, let's see, we'll try it in the back page here. Um, and then we'll put a URL about and add it to And what this is doing is this is actually using a sort of like page creation wizard inside C tools that says, let's go ahead and, and make this thing, put it in the menu, and then give us this sort of like canvas-like approach where if I hit customize, I now have one area to put in content. And we can build up a quick page here for you sort of to show you what you want. So we'll add a, a list of content. We'll make it, um, we'll get these content pages. Let's not do the images, but Let's uh, let's not do the date. Where did that go? Okay. And let's do it in reverse. Let's do it in reverse. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and add these items. We now have some items on the page. That doesn't look super great. So let's go ahead and add a sidebar to it. So we'll go ahead and add a sidebar. Now, if we customize, we have the sidebar. We can go ahead and add. We'll go and add an image because that's sort of neat. So I had, earlier I got a picture of the Opera House, which is this. So we'll go back to the Nope, uh, you don't need to create content types or views. There's uh, a few, the two content types, we, the content type we do have is a sort of page type that you can use. And then there's some views that are done as 
very flexible views that you can sort of configure sort of at runtime. And then all of these like pieces, these aren't nodes, these are actual like uh, fieldable panel pane entities that get established. So we'll go ahead and I also make this reusable, which is a cool demo. But okay, we'll go ahead and add the add the picture. And now we have the, the picture added to the sidebar, which is which is really useful for an about page. You might want to show off where you're from or what's going on. We'll go ahead and add. We'll go ahead and add a map to see if I have that one. Um, and this is this is a sort of cool module that is it's the simple GMAP module, which was basically created just to um, That basically just take like a string of where you're where you are and um, and turn it and turn it into an actual address so this is um, San Francisco and we now have a, a map there which is cool let's go ahead and change the layout so great we'll put a rewiring operation here the other thing you'll notice pretty quickly is that the actual images themselves uh, have some cool responsive logic to them. So what happens is when you sort of move stuff around, the images will resize to sort of fit their appropriate proportions. And that becomes really useful because if you actually put this onto a mobile phone, the layouts themselves will condense and then the images will condense. And you get a, a pretty good like responsive uh, mobile site out of the box. It's not like 100%, you know, you can sort of break it by putting in your own content in certain ways, but it's a great framework to get up and going with mobile quickly without having to like do a lot of work to get it there. You're sort of tweaking an existing working site then sort of from scratch being like, how do I do this? And trying to figure it out, which is pretty cool. Um, so we built this thing up. Other stuff we can add, there's, um, just to sort of show you the, the list of options, we can add links, which is real useful. You can add like a list of quick links to your site. It's a pretty common thing. You can add tab tabular data, which is cool. You can add an actual video. You can add a spotlight rotator where you have different images that sort of cycle between. Uh, you can add just text, which gives you a WYSIWYG or whatever. The other piece which you'll see is that now there's this new category in here called reusable content. So if I make something that I think needs to be like used on multiple pages, I can actually just go ahead and check that box I did when I created that, and it'll actually go ahead and provide you that um, you know, sort of option on any page in your site. So now that I have this Opera House image, I can reuse that across the rest of the site. And that becomes super useful because you can sort of build up a library of these things as an end user that you can then let other people use or configure elsewhere, but that you can sort of just control by virtue of like doing a few options um, in the UI. And that becomes nice because you might want to use, say, a list of links or an image elsewhere on your site. Um, all right. Other stuff that's sort of cool here. So there's a, there's some cool admin interfaces that um, Panoply will ship with. So you can control which layouts you get. You can control the different pages on the site. You can look at the different um, configuration options. Or you can see sort of the different um, items that, that will show up or not show up. And this becomes helpful because as an, an, an admin or a, a distribution author, you can sort of build build neater stuff. Yeah. Yeah, so qu so questions on revisioning. So the, the, the Opera House image is, because it's an entity and because it exists in this world of, um, of entities, that there are revisions on those pieces of, of content. The same thing's true when I actually customize the page and change, change pieces here. That's actually because it's a panelizer entity that's also saved as revisions. How those get exposed to users is more of a back-end admin deal, but the framework is there because we're leveraging this sort of core Drupal concepts that already have that kind of stuff. And so there's been some cool work done with like, especially panelizer where people actually have sort of future revisions that are like, you can set up a whole thing to schedule it in the future and like all your whole front page will change or your whole whatever page will change as you change it. Um, but you know, you can do a lot with this kind of interface and I think sort of in terms of the base distribution and the point of this talk is that like, as someone who wants to build a distribution for others, giving them these kinds of interaction and administration patterns are really helpful because it lets you break out of this sort of like, you have to be a Drupal developer to do something. 
and um, gives you the ability sort of just to be like a smart, like thinking content editing person and being able to understand sort of sort of what, what happens. Um, I had a great conversation. I did a version of this talk in, in, in San Diego uh, a couple weeks now back, and I actually uh, talked to some folks who had used Panoply for a lot of their sites as a consultancy, and they actually, like, they were building stuff, and every week they do demos with their clients and the stuff they build and, and sort of show, hey, we built you a new page or whatever. And they were telling me about one meeting where they sort of did that, and then at the end of the meeting, the client sort of interjects and is like, well, can I show you what I built? And, like, they basically went loose and, like, made, like, several of the pages that were needed to be made with this system and were able to sort of put it all in our content and rearrange it the way they want. And like that's really, that really is exciting to me because that's like the kind of empowerment and the kind of like thing that I think open source and sort of the Drupal system should be doing for people. Should be giving you, if you have good ideas and good content, the ability just to go out and really sort of make, make something awesome happen with that. And um, I think something like Panoply is, is a good, good sort of direction for that. So you know, there's some other features in here that I sort of I you know can definitely show off people are interested in, but the important thing for, for me is just you get a base distribution that has some stuff. Yeah. Yes, so the question is, um, say I want to make a views slideshow, do I have to configure it in views first or can it work? So Panoply ships with this spotlight functionality that looks a lot like what views slideshow will look like. It's actually a, it's actually a, custom, um, a custom entity type using the jQuery cycle library, but it works very much the same. So I don't have any images that are, that are big enough to show you the full on, but I can sort of show you what that interface would look like. So if you hit add spotlight, it's basically asking you to sort of say, uh, give me a title, a link to where to go, and an image, and it'll actually go do that. And no, you wouldn't have to touch views for that kind of thing at all. It just would happen within this. It's also neat because once you save it, you can go and customize it, and you can edit all the fields right there, which is huge. If you've ever configured your view slideshow, you've got to build like you've got to build a node type for it, and then you've got to make the view for it, and then you have to configure the settings for it, and it's just a lot of Drupal. This is much more straightforward to end users. Um, yeah. Yep. In this. Uh, you cannot, re no, you cannot reuse it in this. Um, but any of the images that are saved, uh, say, you, say I added that image, if I was to go ahead and say, add a new piece of content, that, because that image is stored as like a, a sort of first class Drupal file, it's in the files table, it has any kind of like permissioning you want to do around that or version you want to do around that is there. And I could go ahead though and add it, use it uh, as part of the WYSIWYG. So the image is there. Um, the, that spotlight piece just has a, a manual upload, but um, for most of the stuff that actually uses the Drupal file stuff, you can actually sort of reuse it there. And then having this kind of library, which the media module does, it becomes real helpful for site editors because they can just sort of go and run with it. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let me um. Let me show you that. Then we'll. Let me, let me run through that and then I can show you, then we can talk some more about some of the Panoply features. Because I feel, I have a few slides here at the very end, which are basically like, so how do you build it? How do you extend it? How do you do it? So I've got a Drupal, drupal.org node page that sort of tries to explain, hey, I want to use Panoply, but I want to go and add my own module, my own theme. What does that look like? So to sort of show you that off, this is just real straightforward um, Zelda uh, graphic for for people who recognize that. But to actually make a Drupal distribution, you need three things, more or less. You need an info file, which is just the standard list of what modules and dependencies you need. You need a profile file, which is some business logic for installing the Drupal site. And then you need a make file, which is just the sort of, you know, the recipe logic to put it all together. And you can do a lot more than this, but like at sort of the core, you basically need to tell Drupal what modules I'm using, how to get those modules, and then some logic on how they get installed. So to sort of talk about this and how you would add your own. So I, this is more or less what's in Panoply. I like edited some stuff so it would look right on the slide, but like con con theoretically and conceptually, it's, it's the same. So this is what Panoply's info file looks like. It basically says, here's the name of the thing, here's the description of the thing, and here's all the different core components that we're gonna need. 
So this is stuff that's coming from Panoply in terms of its its modules. Um, and you can there's like these are all pretty much optional. Like if you're not using search, you don't have to have Panoply search in your version. But if you wanted to make a sub profile, you want to use Panoply as a base distribution, you would sort of make your own like this, where you're basically changing the name and description for 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 your purposes, leave in the Panoply stuff, and then at the bottom you can add your own sort of custom stuff. So this is where you could add, like say you want to use Webform, which is a great module. Panoply doesn't use it, but a lot of people do. Say your distribution needs it, you just go ahead and add it to the end, or you can go ahead and add a custom module you have, and you just sort of add it right then and there. Yeah. Yeah, so the, so yeah, so the question is, this looks more like forking, less like in, uh, inheritance. So the, there is an issue in the Drupal issue queue, which you're probably mentioning, that basically allows you to sort of do the very specific kind of like base, base override that you would use as for in theming and for uh, Drupal distributions. The problem is that issue it isn't yet, it isn't yet in Drupal 7, and the blocker for that is it needs to be in Drupal 8, but the way this works in Drupal 8 is a little different. And so whether or not that actually ever gets into Drupal 7 is going to be sort of an open question. So right now, the way I've sort of structured it with the, the base distribution stuff is to say, look, like, let's just keep this real simple, right? Like, let's just require you to, like, use these modules, and then that'll be sort of how you would actually get, get going over. So you're not really forking it in the sense, because you're still running all this code the same way. You're just sort of having some ability to customize it. If and when that patch ever gets in, then what you can do is all you'd have to do is instead of having this part right here, uh, with all the dependencies, you would just at the bottom, at the top, put base, and you would get that. Um, totally valid approach, works the same. For me, it's just a question of I wanted it to run on a, a non-patch version of Drupal core versus saying you can use this, but you must use a patch. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so the... Um, how often is it updated? Is that yeah, so the modules g get updated a, a fair bit um, in terms of the different uh, the different uh, different projects that are that are bundled in. And one of the cool things is that this is the make file, sort of like part two of the Trinity you need to do to get these things up and running. Um, there's sort of business logic when you sort of build a version of Panoply that will actually pull in all the dependencies of any, any individual module. So if you use Panoply WYSIWYG, it'll go tell you to build WYSIWYG module, caption filter module, image resize module, and get those in there. As versions get updated, part of the sort of the maintenance of, this, of the base distribution is to go out and get the new version, to implement it in, and then push out a new version of, of Panoply as a base distro. And so there's a fair bit of testing and evaluation that goes into that. Um, and that part of the sort of the core folks who are working on Panoply, they'll go ahead and say, let's, okay, we have a new version of this. Let's make sure it works right. And so all you have to do as a sort of site developer, if you're using Panoply or a distro author, is sort of pay attention to that. But you sort of get that kind of updating and maintenance for free, basically, because you're building on top of something else. Like, uh, yes, yes. You can, you can update modules as normal if you want to go off and do your own thing. Or when a new version of Panoply comes out, you can just ditch the old Panoply profile directory, drop the new one in, and then you'll have all the up-to-date ones. Um, but it, there's no lock into it. You know, you can sort of just do as you want with inside Drupal, and then with inside the make file, you want to add more stuff. You just add add stuff there. Um, yeah, the if you're updating, so the the process of updating Panoply as a profile is. Instead of updating the entirety of Drupal core, you can just update the individual directory. It's slash profile slash Panoply. And then you'd update all the contrib modules, themes, and libraries that Panoply uses. Um, in the case where Drupal core itself is updated and needs to be updated, then you would have to update that as well. But um, you get a couple options on the Drupal.org page on what to download. Yeah, so 
yeah, the definitely the, the the easiest way to go for it is just to have Panoply. When Panoply updates, you grab stuff that you want to have. Then you just grab the new version. You're good to go. And yeah, any distribution. And Drupal.org makes this great because if you've got this make file on your distribution, Drupal.org will actually go off and, and build a whole downloadable file that contains Drupal core and all the modules you need as just one download. And that's something that is, that's a pretty straightforward way to keep yourself up to date. Wait for a new version of the distribution, download it through distribution, use it. There are cases though where like you have, say a security update comes out and you wanna have you know, your thing patched 20 minutes from now, like nothing in the architecture here is preventing you from updating your own modules or if you need a new version or, or whatever. It just makes it easier to do it um, that way. Um, and that's what this make file sort of helps to power. The, the third piece of that trinity, just for completeness sake, is that there is a dot .profile uh, file. Um, there's this bit of logic here that is sort of necessary to make the Panoply stuff work. It basically says turn on dependencies of dependencies in our install profile. But that you can also pr put a lot of other business logic in. So if you're making your own distribution as a base distribution, using Pop as a base distribution, and say you want to have a single, um, single sign-on setup step, you can just go ahead and add that in your profile. And then you'll spin up your, your product with all the Panoply stuff plus extra stuff you have. And those three things sort of get you a, a profile. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, I think, and part of the, the cool logic here is that um, in terms of this piece, this is also a patch that, that's, that's against Drupal core if it was to go in, which would to make these dependency stuff manage. That's something that, since it probably won't go in, because there's a lot of complexity around that, all we're doing is offloading the actual business logic for how to do this into a separate file that's in the module. So as long as you're installing Panoply core and you're calling it, all the updates that, you're hap that are happening to that like business logic are happening in this um, Panoply Core Profile Inc. file. So yeah, you would run into problems if you change this, but you're not in a situation where you have to like maintain any sort of diff between what Panoply is doing and what you're doing. That there isn't, a, there isn't a connection that has to happen beyond this. And even this is ultimately optional if you define all the modules that you want in your info file. But the important thing is that you're not you don't have to work against an upstream. You sort of just like run with the contrib modules that Panoply has and, and you're good to go. I, yeah, I mean, we wouldn't, we wouldn't change Panoply.profile in any way that would break what you have. Like I do hard code it to have West Coast time. Um, that could potentially change. Um, but no, I mean, there's the, the whole point of the base distribution is that we don't want to have situations where people do have to do get stuck on their own, that they should use the modules and, and the different details here uh, to, to make their distributions, but then can sort of go on their own, own merry way. So there's um, a bunch of folks that are using it sort of right now. The, there's a couple Drupal products, Open Academy and Open Atrium. They're both having versions of their stuff with Panoply Base. Um, Open Academy is out now. You can take a look at how this stuff works. And Atrium is being worked on for Drupal 7. Should be ready by DrupalCon Portland. And that'll be great, because I love OpenHRM. I think it's one of the best Drupal products and really addresses a large market of people. Having Panoply as sort of that drag and draw stuff is very cool. And then in the sort of university space, uh, UC Berkeley uses it for a lot of their sort of campus sites, and the uh, Government of Canada uses it for a lot of their federal government sites. And they sort of take this base distribution approach and have plenty of their own requirements on top of it, but really get you in a place where um, you can actually do sort of cool, cool, uh, uh, cool extra stuff on your own. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's, uh, you can get it just in terms of checking it out. See Drupal.org, it's available. Um, I think there's a newer version out than what's in the screenshot, but you can read, I got, there's a bunch of documentation around what's going on. And so, you know, you can get the downloads and, and check out the code. You'll have to install it, but it's just the same kind of installation as Drupal normal. Um, although you might want to put a little more memory into it, but you can read, there's a bunch of the base distribution stuff, um, on here to, uh, to learn how to sort of do that. And there's also the, on a, a Pantheon where I, where I work, you can get the ability if you s sign up for a Pantheon account, which is free, you can install, uh, get created a new site, and you can obviously pick Drupal Core as a new site, but you can also pick Panoply, and you'll spin up a whole version of what I showed you, so you can play around with it, which is, which is pretty useful. Um, other than that, definitely, uh, definitely interested in some questions. 
and I can go back to sort of sort of my larger demo, but I'm very curious sort of how people, how they're seeing themselves using base distributions, questions about some of the functionality in Panoply or other stuff. Um, and we'll maybe start at the front and work back. Gotcha. So um, in terms of the how it compares to Spark, so Spark's also a base distribution, um, more or less. It, uh, you know, in it, it's set up to sort of make content editing better. Um, it's very much focused in terms of a lot of its, its sort of push right now on getting sort of Drupal 8 in the right place. So a lot of the Drupal 7 stuff was sort of proof of concept to show how Drupal 8 would work. A lot of that's being cleaned up and pushed out as sort of formal releases. Uh, Spark stuff's so more interested in the sort of Fr edit in place kind of functionality on a field level. So it's not giving you this kind of like Chrome to like sort of drag and drop like whole areas around. It's not trying to standardize all the components together. And it's very much geared towards more of a Drupal 8 kind of environment where this is working in Drupal 7. And the Drupal 8 version of this is going to try to keep more of this sort of like in place editing kind of experience. This is where, this is where I feel sort of the, the key value to Panoply is, is integrating everything like this. And that sort of is a difference. Um, in terms of difference with NodeStream, so NodeStream is uh, also a base distribution um, maintained by Wonderkraut that they use for a lot of their internal projects and a lot of other folks use it. Um, that is, that's more of, I think, an in-house kind of intro uh, distribution just because what it's, it's set up in a somewhat complicated way and is less focused on sort of the end user kind of drag and drop and more as a good developer starting point. Um, which if you're, uh, if you're getting into being a good Drupal developer, you can get a lot of value out of downloading NodeStream and working with it, but it's not as much set up to hand off to the end user. That what Panoply's trying to do is be a base distro for products that you can hand off to someone who can configure independent of, of that code. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, um, yes, so Panoply plays well with Eager. It's, uh, we, had some, we have a number of people trying it out, and we put some patches in, so it'll install with Drush, and, and that's sort of the Agar deal. Yeah, so the question is using it with organic groups. Um, I've done a little bit. Uh, OpenHRM is using it extensively with organic groups, and there was a couple patches we pushed up to make sure that that worked with the panelizer context, but um, I check out th their development stuff to get a better view, but as far as I know, uh, it was more or less smooth sailing once they got past a few initial quirks, and um, yeah, and it works just fine. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, a lot of the philosophy with Panoply is that we're not really changing a lot of what Drupal does. We're just using the entity system and providing optionality. So if you can, you can make a page in, in Drupal that doesn't use any of this stuff if you want, it just gives you the option to use it because it's a little better for end users. Yeah. Uh, Yes. Yeah, so a question is of the layouts, there's a lot. Let's let's lock it down. Yes, there is a there's a layout administration page and it gives you a list of all of them. You can enable or disable them uh, depending on what you want. Um, and that provides you with uh, with with that kind of flexibility. You can also, there's also some patches in the panels queue to actually allow you to do this on a per node basis if you want or with more fine grain control. But just for the interface, we're trying to get you um, more sort of enable or disable for the whole site. Um, but yeah, you can definitely lock that down. Other questions? Yeah. Yeah, so questions on performance. Um, I would say that like Panoply is not doing anything that drastically different than sort of Drupal plus a few plus the modules that we have. Um, the a lot of the sort of like magical code in Drupal is actually done with uh, with uh, for the, it's for more of an admin thing. So I mean sometimes there's a little delay in some of the admin screens, but that's that may or may not be related. Um, in terms of the performance, I think the biggest problem with performance that you're going to see with Panoply site, similar to how you see with the panel site, isn't anything about the code execution path. It's more about how extendable it makes people allow them to build sites. So like, it's so easy just to like add a, like a list of items and sort it by this, and you can really make complex pages, and that will create performance issues, not because of the specific code, but just because it lets you build a lot of stuff real easy. But in terms of the performance stuff, like I've definitely done the profiling of it, 
and stuff. And there's nothing that's there's nothing that's happening here that's any different than the normal Drupal site with the modules it has. Um, and it can be pretty fast if you want it to be. Um, yeah. Yes. So the question is on cropping images. Um, there, the only thing that's built in right now is there's this image resize filter where you can actually adjust um, above and you can adjust like sort of the size of an image and that'll resize. But you don't have any ability to make judgments about what to show. It's simply it's simply a size issue. Um, there are several solutions in the in in Drupal 7 land that will do things like that. I've played around with them. There's positives and minuses on both. So I, there's it's it's been in the issue queue for a while and people have been bouncing around ideas, but there's nothing that I think is works sufficiently stably to have it be included. But it's you can all these image like fields are just image fields. You can you add additional ways to work with that if you want. Um, it just doesn't have anything out of the box for it. Ah, other questions? Yeah. Yeah, sure. So the question here is, to t how do you how do you write, create themes with this stuff? So I think an important design philosophy here is that all uh, this is responsive Bartik as a theme, so it gets responsive stuff. But all Panoply is really concerned about is the content content variable in your theme. So you can pop in any arbitrary theme onto this site, and it'll work. You're just sort of only having the content stuff be controlled by Panoply, and the layouts themselves will only work in the content content region, right? So you can't change the top, the the header, or any of those things with those layouts. So by that virtue, you can sort of have that sort of exist um, on its own. Um, and you can have alternate layouts for the rest of your site. There are a couple cool uh, integrations, uh, including the Radix theme, which is probably the best of this, to take Twitter Bootstrap and apply it to, to this stuff. And then you can actually go, go change it and, um, and make that all work really well. But theming is really straightforward. There's a doc page on it. But it's basically like do your normal Drupal theme. Just be aware that we're doing responsive stuff this way and that you, if you as long as you leave the content variable alone, you're fine, you're fine. Um, and that works just fine. Other questions, maybe two more, yeah. Test system. Yeah, so questions on running a CRM. Uh, as far as I know, no problem. I mean, there's nothing that we're doing architecturally that would prevent that. Um, you'd have to install it. it doesn't, you don't get any help along that way, but it's not in any way blocked. And likely, yeah. If, if, if views can get access to the content, you can expose it in, in Panopoly. Um, and then you could probably, I'd be curious to see if, if someone did do that, like how that would work. But uh, as far as I know, that should be relatively as straightforward as getting Civ, Civ e set up in the first place is. Um, uh, Maybe one more question. Yeah. Um, yes. Um, it doesn't turn block module is not enabled by default. You can turn it on. Um, blocks as as a concept is more or less. I mean, the the word block is existing in Drupal eight, but a lot of what I'm showing you now, and this is also part of the philosophy of Panopolis. A lot of what Panopolis trying to do is give you the kind of stuff that's in Drupal eight, but you can have Panopoly now. That you can have the ability to create these like smart blocks, which you know, which Drupal 8 will have, that look more like the plugin system Chaos Tools is using and less like block module. That you can have the kind of like, you know, responsive and drag and drop stuff, the admin interfaces and the WYSIWYG. And you can get a lot of these pieces right now. And a lot of the roadmap for Panoply is saying, okay, like here's what people need in D7, let's make that work awesome for distros in D7. Then when Drupal 8 world, let's go take the stuff that won't be in Drupal 8, make sure that get keeps in Panoply, but let Drupal core do as much of that work as possible. So definitely things like blocks we're trying to get rid of because that's the way blocks have worked up through Drupal 7 are very limited and, and, and don't really give you that kind of functionality you can see where you can add an image, give it a style, and throw it on there. And so yeah, so in general what we're trying to do with Panoply is create a strong base distribution that a lot of people can use, provide you a lot of features right now that are really useful and make it super straightforward to extend um, for your own products and stuff. So thank you all for listening. Check it out. <laughs> and I'll be, if anyone wants to use it or play around with it, I'll be around the rest of the conference and, and happy to chat around all things. <laughs>